So in our last video, we took a look at the CPU that we purchased to upgrade our test bench. Previous to this, we actually had an i3-12100F, and quite rightly, you guys pointed out that we actually had a few CPU bottlenecks in some of our benchmarks. Now, this is the i7-12700K, and obviously being a K processor, it means it comes with a built-in graphics. And of course, as with anything that comes to our studio that can actually display a picture, we want to see if we can game on it. Now, as we saw in our last video, the i7-12700K is a fantastic CPU. It is more than enough to keep up with any of the graphics cards, even the newer models that we've had through. But when it comes to internal graphics, what kind of gaming could we expect? Now, there is a couple of reasons why you would actually want to game on one of these. Generally, if you are a person that has a 12700K, the chances are you've got yourself a discrete graphics card. But we always know that they can go wrong and with the market being fluctuated all the time and sometimes them not exactly being available at the prices you want, you may have to wait a little bit to actually pick one up. Now in the meantime, while you're waiting for that, you may have to use the internal graphics. And that is one of the great things about a CPU that has an iGPU built in. But while you're waiting for that graphics card, can you actually play any games? Well, that's exactly what we wanted to find out. The i7-12700K actually has a built-in UHD 770 graphics. Now Intel, particularly on their CPUs, are not very well known for the performance of their iGPUs. And the last time we actually tested one was probably a Celeron processor, which did okay. It wasn't brilliant, but it wasn't any kind of Ryzen APU. So I'm hoping that Intel have actually upped their game a little bit, particularly with these new models. But to find out, obviously we needed to do some benchmarking and that's what we've been doing for the last couple of days. The first set of tests we did was against our standard test suite, the one that we generally use for discrete graphics cards. And unfortunately it didn't go very well. Now our target usually is 60 frames per second at a 1080p high setting. But of course, as expected, the iGPU in this CPU was actually uh, not great at all. When we tested those games, we actually struggled to hit 10 frames per second in most of the games. And the 1% lows were absolutely terrible. But with, of course, the highest one coming out was Doom Eternal with an average FPS of 16. Now the 1% lows weren't too bad on that one, but because the actual FPS on both are extremely low, that just means that the game wasn't playable at all. It was kind of a comical moment really. But how does that compare to something from AMD? Taking a look at an AMD APU from the 5000 series, something much, much cheaper than the Intel 12700, you can see that it's probably providing about half the performance. In Bat for Blood, we managed to get 20 frames per second with those uh, expected target settings. Whereas on the Intel UHD, 770 we only managed to get 10 that's about half the performance and the one percent lows were pretty much similar cyberpunk 2077 was completely unplayable on both but again the intel hd 770 really struggled to even get anything near around six in doom eternal the radeon vega 8 that's found inside the 5600g that we tested managed to get a respectable 26 frames per second which actually wasn't bad and the game was kind of playable but again, the UHD 770 only managed to get 16, which was completely unplayable. God of War destroyed both integrated graphics, making it completely unplayable on both. And then when it came to Red Dead Redemption 2, which is probably the oldest game on the list, again, the Ryzen processor or APU managed to get a respectable 20 frames per second, completely unplayable, but then so was the Intel UHD 770. Shadow of the Tomb Raider shocked us a little bit because it generally plays pretty well on even older technology. But the Ryzen processor using the Vega 8 graphics actually only got a 16 FPS. Whereas the Intel UHD 770 managed to just scrape 10 frames per second, which again is completely unplayable. Now Spider-Man Remastered was the biggest shock of all because on the Radeon Vega 8, we managed to get a pretty decent 27 frames per second. And that was actually better than Doom Eternal, which was quite shocking. But again, the Intel UHD 770 only managing to get about 12 frames per second on average was completely unplayable and was a little bit of a mess. That's not something that you would want to try. Now in comparison to something like a 5000 series APU from AMD, the internal graphics on the Intel Core processors, even these 12th gen, are just no match. They can't compete at all with it. So AMD have done something right there. But if you are stuck with the built-in graphics on your Intel processor, again, we wanted to retest all of those games, lowering the settings as far as we can to even try to get to 30 frames per second. Some people out there find that 30 frames per second, particularly in a lot of these single player games, is actually pretty reasonable and they can play it even though it's probably not so nice. Reducing all of the games that we tested down to their lowest setting, particularly when it comes to fidelity, any further you wouldn't have even been able to really play the game at all 
we managed to get some reasonable kind of results, but nothing really to shout home about. In Back for Blood, reducing the resolution to 720p, turning off AA, turning off motion blur, and also turning off optical occlusion. With a low preset, we managed to get an average of 22 frames per second. The 1% lows though were only 8 frames per second, which still meant that the game was pretty unplayable. Cyberpunk 2077 was just completely unplayable no matter what we did, even reducing the resolution down to 720p, and with a low preset, we still only managed to get an average of 21 FPS, although the 1% lows were slightly higher on this one, compared to Bat for Blood. So the game was still completely unplayable and there was nothing really you could do about it. Doom Eternal, the game that generally plays pretty much on anything, when lowering the resolution to 720 and using a low preset, we actually did manage to hit our target of 30 frames per second. On average, we got 32 frames per second with a 1% low of 21, which actually meant the game was actually reasonably playable and you could probably get away with it, particularly in some of the areas with less enemy on the screen. God of War, just like the others, actually improved greatly once we lowered the resolution to 720p and also the quality preset down to low, getting an average of 22 frames per second, but with a 1% low of only 12 frames per second, it was again unplayable just like many of the others. Red Dead Redemption 2 being the oldest game in the list, we actually did manage to hit our target here by lowering the resolution to 720p and also using a low preset or near lowest preset. We managed to get an average of 32 frames per second with a 1% low of 26. Now many people would say that that's actually playable, particularly for a single player game that is reasonably slow paced anyway, so you could probably get away with it, but it's going to take away from the experience of the game and you probably won't like it that much. Shadow of the Tomb Raider, again, a game that usually runs really, really well on everything. When we lowered the resolution to 720p using a low preset, we could still only manage to average around 23 frames per second with a 1% low of 17. Now, as you can tell from a lot of these results as we've gone through, particularly when we get to Shadow of the Tomb Raider, a lot of these games seem to cap out around that 20 FPS and that seems to be the maximum you can push out of the UHD 770, so it's not going to be a great experience, particularly on a lot of these modern AAA kind of titles. Spider-Man Remastered was no different, only getting an average of 22 frames per second with a 1% low of 7, which meant it was so jittery that you couldn't really get the game to play well. And that was, of course, using, again, a 720p resolution with a low preset. Again, another game that you probably wouldn't want to play like that because it's just going to take the experience away and you're not going to be able to enjoy what you're doing. Now, of course, the tests that we've done so far have just proven that the UHD 770 is not very good when it comes to your more modern AAA titles or even some of the old ones, particularly like Red Dead Redemption 2, but they are pretty demanding games. So it's not something that you'll want to play on this. But if you are stuck with the internal graphics, particularly if you're waiting for a new discrete graphics card to turn up, what are your options? Well, there are a few alternatives to those games that you can get away with. Instead of playing Doom Eternal, you could play Doom 2016. Now the game is slightly older, but it is an extremely well-optimized game and running in 720p with a medium preset, you can get an average of around 46 frames per second with a 1% low of 34. That means that the game is completely playable, so you can get away with that one. Red Dead Redemption 2, instead of playing that, you could switch to something like GTA 5. Again, a much older game, but a very similar engine thing. And if you were to run that game in 1080p with a normal preset, you can get an average of 53 frames per second with a 1% low of 43. Now again, those results mean that the game is completely playable and you could pretty much play it end to end without any issues. With Shadow of the Tomb Raider being one of the games that performed really, really badly, you could actually swap it out for the original Tomb Raider 2013. Now that game is very similar and it's actually part of that set. And if you were to run it in 1080p with a normal preset, you can get an average of 53 frames per second with a 1% low of 42. Now that is very similar results to GTA 5, so you're gonna get a pretty good experience across both of those games. And if all fails and those games don't appeal to you, you could just go back to play something like Half-Life 2. Give it another rerun and give it another go. When running in 1080p with a high preset, you can get an average of 142 frames per second with a 1% low of 76, which clearly means that that game is extremely playable and it is a fantastic game. So if you are somebody out there that is missing a graphics card or you're waiting for one and you have one of these processors with a built-in iGPU, I can highly recommend 
going back to play something like Half-Life 2 or any of that series, anything from the Source engine will generally run pretty well. Instead of Back for Blood, try Left for Dead. That game is actually fantastic and it's the original, so you're going to have lots of fun with it. Let me know in the comments below, are you actually gaming on a iGPU from Intel? And let me know about the experience you're getting. Maybe we'll pick something up similar to what you've got and we'll give it a bit more of a test and see how well it does. I like to play with the weird things, particularly things like built-in graphics, just to see how they perform and see what kind of uh, gaming people can do on them and if you like that kind of stuff too make sure that you subscribe to the channel because we're always looking at something weird like this but until then we'll catch you in the next one